in the NBA and not with yesterday's all-star festivities, which I'm going to get to, but kind of major news that flew under the radar right before the all-star weekend. Phoenix Suns point guard, their star point guard, Chris Paul, who was actually just announced as a top 75 player of all time, who was recognized yesterday. He is now out six to eight weeks due to a thumb fracture that he sustained on Wednesday of last week against the Houston Rockets in a game. And this is some major news. Now, this is very significant, not just because of the fact that we're unsure whether Chris Paul is going to return the rest of the season. Obviously, he's going to return. That's not the concern. The concern is about the seeding, and especially for a Phoenix Suns team trying to hold on to the number one seed and retain the top spot in the Western Conference because right now they have the best record in the NBA, 48 and 10. They are six and a half games clear of the next closest, which is the Golden State Warriors. So right now, yes, they have a sizable cushion, but you're talking about perhaps at the earliest, if this timetable is accurate, Chris Paul comes back the last week of the regular season best case scenario or first round of the of the of the postseason so this is a really significant injury being sustained to Chris Paul the other thing is as great as the Phoenix Suns have been on the road over the last two years they had the best record on the road last season they have the best road record this year in the NBA and as proven as they are to a degree because this is a team after all that reached the NBA finals last year they were knocking on the door. They, they had nearly reached the precipice of winning an NBA title. So they are challenged. They are battle tested. But I do think that because they are lacking a championship, it adds more, more urgency to hold on through for, for home court advantage throughout the duration of the postseason. I think that for a team like that, where when you look at the Western Conference, you say the Phoenix Suns and the Golden State Warriors are probably the two best teams in the Western Conference. And there's a strong argument to be made. They are the two best teams in the NBA, period. That ultimately the team that has home court advantage in a series like that, that I think would go the distance, would prove to be the difference. And that's why this is substantial to me is because I'm not concerned about Chris Paul, about his availability. He'll come back. No questions about that, no reservations about that, but where will they be in the standing? Will they be able to take a Warriors team seven games and have that seventh game be played in Phoenix, or will they have to go to the Chase Center in San Francisco? So that, that's the concern for me. Now, surprisingly, this is the first significant injury that Chris Paul has sustained in a Phoenix Suns uniform. To his credit, he had played in every single game this year for the Phoenix Suns. He and Mikel Bridges were the only two guys that had played in all 58 games. But obviously we know the litany of injuries that he has sustained throughout the course of his career, and all of them have been untimely injuries as well. Obviously last year in the postseason with the hand, it wasn't significant, but it was enough to derail the team a little bit. The hamstrings. He has pulled so many, or he has, he has strained his hamstring multiple postseasons over the course of his career, obviously infamously with the Houston Rockets when they were up three games to two over that Golden State Warriors team with Steph, Clay, Draymond, KD, Andre Iguodala. There's a strong argument to, me, argument to be made that had Chris Paul not going down, they would have won that series. So... Most of the time, they've been untimely, and this is the first significant injury that he has sustained. And again, given the timeline, it's just not the best as far as giving him ample time to get his conditioning back. Now, I guess at this stage in his career, he's a proven veteran. He'll understand how to pace himself, and now he'll get a little bit of rest before the postseason. But I, I also just thought that when I saw him play yesterday in the All-Star game, now granted he didn't play many minutes, and the Phoenix Suns coach, Monty Williams, was the head coach of the All-Star game. So he's aware of Chris Paul's situation. Did I love that he checked into the game briefly? No, I didn't think it was a great 
look from an optics standpoint. Obviously, he wanted to pay tribute and pay his respects to the fans and media for voting him in the All-Star game. And who knows how many more All-Star games he's going to be voted into. So that certainly played a role into his decision. But if you're a Phoenix Suns fan and you know he's going to be out six to eight weeks, do you love seeing him out on the floor? Not particularly. So I think, though, that this is... This is a major blow for Phoenix Suns team, but now we'll really get a chance to see how much and how far Devin Booker has grown and has matured in his NBA career because this is a golden opportunity for him to show not only the Phoenix Suns, but to prove to the NBA, hey, listen, I'm a different player. I'm a different leader for this Phoenix Suns team because they're going to be leaning heavily on him during this stretch. He's been having a fantastic season, was an all-star and deservedly so strong argument could have been made for him to be an all-star starter this year, averaging 25 points per game. The guy's lethal. We know that. So this is a golden opportunity to see what he's capable of. Is this going to be the same Phoenix Suns team where he's averaging 25 points per game, but they are struggling to be a 500 caliber group or will the leadership skills have rubbed off from CP3 to Devin Booker. And we're going to see it kind of manifest and and present itself right now. Cameron Payne, he'll be fine. Cameron Payne's been averaging 10.5 points per game in about 20 minutes per night in the NBA. He's proven that that he can fill, to a certain degree, the void when Chris Paul isn't playing. We saw it in the postseason last year, but now this is an extended period of time. So this is a big void, though, collectively to fill. And obviously, Chris Paul's impact on a team is profound. It's astronomically high. I think we saw over the last two seasons, it became extremely apparent how valuable he is to the NBA, what he did for the Oklahoma City Thunder, and then what he did for the Phoenix Suns last year. Provides the ultimate leadership, ultimate intangibles. So that he will be he will be dearly missed, but the way that he's been the kind of conductor of this Phoenix Suns team, orchestrating the offense, holding guys accountable, showing the leadership, that's going to be missing. It's going to be lacking, but we'll see what the rest of the cast is made of. But this is a major, major injury that really in, in a story that that most people really weren't talking about because it flew and kind of blended right into the All-Star game. And now that we are heading out of that, it's going to be a story to pay attention to. 